oh yeah uh taro kono after bragging last week about how fast japan had gone basically like jamming to get as many people vaccinated as possible um he actually sent out a message uh this week saying to all the municipalities that have gone way too fast vaccinating people um if you keep going at this pace you know we won't be able to supply you you know for um we won't be able to ensure proper distribution of second shots for everybody so we'll need the 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 the, the municipalities going a bit too wild going a bit too fast so please pace yourselves so um he's literally gone scomo um he's, he's gone uh, you know it's a marathon uh, a couple of days after bragging how fast japan was going um, so this is kind of the situation that the guy and it's not it's partially a supply issue but not really a supply issue it's just that the government doesn't have the logistics to distribute it fast enough uh, it turns out that when they make it available the enthusiasm for the shots are, is, is totally there the other thing that's great is that of course the elderly appear to um you know nationwide it's actually 76 percent of elderly so far uh, you know over 65 have been vaccinated and, and it's totally voluntary so in spite of all of the concerns about vaccine hesitancy and all of that people seem to be uh doing it voluntarily so you know the, it, it looks like the signs are that you know japan is going to affirmatively try to get vaccinated but um you know the the I, the, I have a big concern, of course, because kids can't be vaccinated. Can the whole population get to 70% vaccination? But, you know, the signs are so far, at least among elderly, that, yeah, maybe they can. Of course, elderly at the greatest risk. And this is an indication of the sort of numbers, 950 the other day. So, you know, uh, not good. Um, the R number for Tokyo right now, I think you can see on here, it'll be... Um, Whereas 127.9%, so that's R1.2, you know, that's that's uh, R1.3. So not good. Anyway, numbers are going up like crazy. AV84K, a few weeks ago, your country removed a lot of COVID restrictions. So now cases are going up very fast, uh, unsurprisingly. AV84K, what country is that, by the way? Um, sorry, um, you might have told me before and I can't keep track, but it's always really interesting to know where people are checking in from. Uh, and sorry to hear that with cases there, although, you know, uh, yeah, I'm hearing that story from a lot of countries, actually. Um, you know, the, the Delta variant is indeed scary, and it seems to be contributing to what's happening in Tokyo. I will talk about that a little bit tonight. Um, Netherlands. Oh, geez, so I'm sorry that it's all low with Euro. I mean, I don't know. The news in Japan was like, yeah, people are saying, hey, is this because of Euro? Um, everyone seems to be having a great time, but uh, but yes, indeed. Um yeah yeah i've seen new south wales being silly as i mean all the states are being silly as usual i mean i, I saw i, I like i do watch media watch and yeah yeah it just reminds me how nuts australia is <laughs> like the fact that queensland has decided to like ban astrazeneca for people under 40 um and all the sort of silliness where people are allowed into the country but brisbane you know but the queensland won't let them airport you know state won't let them out of the airport and stuff like that it's uh, all the states there seem a little bit loopy so yeah, yeah. Anyway, lots of craziness going on in all parts of the world. And that's what we are, of course, going to talk a bit about tonight, but with a particular focus on Japan. Victoria comply. <laughs> Victoria complies. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Look, I think Australia is very lucky. It's kind of weird in a way. Australia is way better off than Japan is by numbers and by cases and stuff like that. But everyone there seems much more stressed out. I mean, here. Yeah, I, I must admit, oh, I have some good personal news to share. I am scheduled once again. I actually had a, a vaccination scheduled a couple of weeks ago and it got cancelled. Um, but uh, I got managed to schedule another one, uh, still with work. But also I got my voucher last week, so I should be able to do it locally as well, like in a month from now, um, because of it's, they do it by age. So uh, I'm not eligible yet in my local area, although I have my voucher number for it. If you're in Japan, uh, the, the government, the, the regional rollouts, you need a voucher. Um, but um, I, I'm also entitled to a workplace vaccination, and that will be at the end of this week. I'll be able to get my first Moderna shot. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and paying attention to some of the, you know, people who have had side effects for it's mostly sore arms and stuff like that and feeling crappy for a day afterwards. Um, but, you know, some people doing really, like, intense exercise right after, which I think my running counts as, um, just looking at my heart rate from it. I've heard people getting into trouble with that, so I think I'm definitely going to take it easy, but I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's going to be, like, four weeks, I think, for the Moderna shots in between, three weeks for Pfizer. But uh, I can't wait to get both of those done, I mean, just for the sake of everyone around me and myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, flying celebs into Australia but cannot repatriate others stuck abroad. Well, indeed, in, in, in every country's variations of that. I think that's actually part of what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, runway incursion. Good to see you. I've heard that about the second shot, that it's the second shot that gets you with Moderna. 
Is it the second shot or the first shot? I don't know. Paragotti, have I been vaccinated yet? You got your second shot of uh, Pfizer next Friday. Congratulations. This Friday, I'm getting my first Moderna shot. Uh, I was supposed to have a shot last week, but it got cancelled. But I got a new setup this week. So I'm looking forward to that. So that means I'll be able to get my second shot because it's Moderna. I think it's four weeks, so it'll be mid-August. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't wait to get it. But at the same time, I mean, I'm not going out other than jogging. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to getting that. Uh, Paragotti, and congrats on having your second shot coming up. Just getting that done, you know. Oh, EEDIR, by the way, congratulations on getting your Moderna shot today. How are you feeling? Um, I'm up for that this week. So, yeah, well, I guess I'll be like two days after the shot. I'll be able to report this time. Wow, that's crazy. I'll be able to report this time next week on what getting Moderna is like for me. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be okay. I've heard people talk about a couple of people from work who got the same shot who had like fever for two days. Um, although they, they thought maybe that had it, maybe that had COVID nineteen late last year and stuff like that. You know, as a sort of a, they weren't sure. But I've heard that it can hit you really hard if you if you've actually had it. I'm pretty sure I haven't, but we'll see anyway. Um, <laughs> shoulder hurts. Nurse jabbed it pretty hard. Oh God, I hope I'm okay. You do, I, I do hear that you get that that the, the Moderna arm yeah, six days after. I've heard like the whole arm can go red as well. Like I don't know, yeah, crazy stuff. I, I just want it for the improved five G. Uh, not that much, Tess. After the second Pfizer shot, you had a speed up flu. Oh geez, uh, it's worth it all though because uh, it's really good with scanning a QR code, and you have a cert on your phone. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting um, uh, a vaccine passport as well. Uh, and, you know, I think it's a good affirmative way to encourage people to get vaccinated.